If you regularly watch my channel, chances are you've been trying to grow on Instagram for years. And chances are you're feeling frustrated by a lack of growth, despite how much hard work you put into the platform. And probably you're also frustrated by all of the wild changes that Instagram keeps introducing especially some of the more questionable ones. If you can relate to that, then I've got a secret for you. You need to start a YouTube channel. If you've been working hard to become a content creator, but you haven't given YouTube as a primary platform a shot yet, then my goal with this video is to convince you to try. There's a reason why all the successful TikTokers and Instagrammers all end up over on YouTube eventually, and I'm gonna tell you why in this video and give you some tips and tricks to get started. This video is sponsored by Munch. Stick around to later in the video to see how this powerful online tool can make repurposing your long form video content as easy as just a few clicks. The main reason why I think it's easier to grow an audience on YouTube than it is to grow an audience on Instagram is because there's more discoverability. Now, when I say discoverability in terms of social media, what I mean is how easy is it for new people who've never seen your content before to find you? Cause that's obviously how you grow, right? Finding brand new people to come and see your content so they hit that follow or subscribe button. Across social media platforms, there are really two main kinds of discoverability. We've got search and we've got recommendations. Search is fairly straightforward. That's people searching for your kind of content and they find it maybe because you use the right keywords or answering a question that they're trying to ask. And we see that in various formats across Instagram and YouTube. Recommendations is a little less straightforward. Basically what discoverability via recommendations is, is algorithms that get to know what a user's interests are and then serve them content based on their interests. In my opinion, YouTube comes out ahead of Instagram on both of these fronts. Historically, Instagram didn't have a lot of discoverability. Like most people opened up Instagram and would scroll through a feed of square photos from people that they already knew. Yeah, of course they could look up a hashtag or go to a location tag or search somebody by their username and like find someone new that way. But for the most part, Instagram users don't really do that or didn't really do that. Like we all pick up our phone and we scroll through what we already have in front of us. Now, recently that has been changing, right? Because Instagram has introduced some new recommendations based content. We see the reels feed is formatted this way. So when you scroll through reels, you aren't necessarily seeing content from people that you've already followed. You're seeing content that the algorithm thinks that you're interested in. And Instagram is starting to incorporate more of this type of content to the home feed. So we're seeing recommendations showing up in our home feed. So the kind of content that historically you would have only seen on the explore page is now integrated with your content from people you're following. So we do see Instagram trying to address this issue of discoverability via recommendations. But what I think we're not really seeing on Instagram is a lot of people discovering content via search. Now, we know that Instagram has definitely improved their SEO functionality so you can find posts based on keywords that are in their caption, in the comments, even words that are baked into the graphic. But even while Instagram search engines are getting more sophisticated, in my opinion, most Instagram users aren't really using it as a search platform. Like I personally know I've never gone on Instagram to search recipe ideas or tutorials or answers to my questions. Like, have you ever gone to Instagram and typed in the search bar, like how to make a content calendar or something, trying to find content that answers that? Like, I've never done that. I don't think a lot of people use Instagram that way. And so for that reason, while the discoverability via recommendations is increasing on the app, there's still not a lot of people finding stuff via search. Okay, so we can see the limitations of discoverability on Instagram. Let me tell you why those limitations don't really exist on YouTube. Even before the TikTok for you page came along and revolutionized the idea of recommendations based algorithm feeds, YouTube's been doing this for years. YouTube has been recommending content to users based on their interests for a long time through the homepage and through suggested videos. So people can find your content based on the YouTube algorithm, identifying their interests and then kind of matching them up with the videos that you've made. But in addition to that, YouTube also has a super strong search based 
platform. Like a lot of people come to YouTube to search for the answers to their questions. I especially think in the beginning, this is one of the biggest ways that new creators can generate an audience on YouTube. It's by answering FAQs in their niche, making high quality, concise videos that answer those questions. And then it shows up when people search. Like if somebody searches, why should I start a YouTube channel? This video hopefully will show up and they'll watch it and hopefully find some value from it and maybe subscribe. So if that's you, if you found this from searching, subscribe. I make other videos like this too. So YouTube is a powerhouse of discoverability because people can find you not only through recommendations on their homepage and in suggested videos, but they can also find you through searching for the kind of stuff that you're talking about. Remember, YouTube is owned by Google and Google is the world's largest and most sophisticated search engine. So it's gonna be really good at making sure that the people who are looking for your content are finding it. Okay, so this is all good in theory, but what does it actually mean if you wanna start a YouTube channel and start getting some views? This is what I suggest. So start a channel that has an obvious purpose or niche, like make sure you know who your target audience is and all of that stuff. And then build up a library of concise and valuable videos that answer the frequently asked questions in your niche. You can also make some tutorials walking people through the step-by-steps of doing stuff that they're kind of curious about doing. I built up my channel a lot in the early days by doing this. I've got tons of tutorials about how to edit a vlog on TikTok, like how to trim TikToks, how to add a voiceover to TikTok, how to create Instagram stories, how to edit Instagram reels, how to edit a podcast, how to edit a YouTube video. Like this was the bread and butter of my channel for the first few years of my growth. And it still is a big part of it now. Okay, so once you have a decent library, let's say like five to 10 videos that are high quality, answer an FAQ, they're ranking well in search, then you wanna start targeting the recommendations traffic. Really focus on making clickable, curiosity-inducing titles and thumbnails, and then a strong, interesting video that tells the story, takes your viewer on a journey while also providing some value to them. It's really important no matter what video you're making for YouTube, whether it's targeting search traffic or recommendations traffic, that you keep your viewer engaged until the end. Because here's a little bit of extra info for you, which honestly I could make a whole video breaking this down, but the way the YouTube algorithm works is it's primarily judging the quality of your video based on your click-through rate. That means how many people that saw this video clicked on the thumbnail. And second of all, your view duration. So how long did the people who clicked watch for and that's kind of how they determine is this video interesting is it valuable enough to kind of watch to the end so if you can get a high click through rate and a high view duration your video will be shown to more people having this combination of search based content and kind of home page based content will really help you start getting some traction in the early days and start attracting an audience to your channel Okay, with that in mind, are you ready to learn the reason why all creators from TikTok to Instagram all end up on YouTube eventually? Well, I'm gonna tell you. It's because, get this, YouTube actually pays you to make content on their platform. Ever heard of AdSense? Well, YouTube has had this program in place for a while where once you reach the requirements that they've got in place, you can place ads on your videos and then you get a little bit of money for every view that ad gets. Basically for every dollar that a brand pays to have an ad on my video, YouTube gets 50 cents and I get 50 cents. I personally think YouTube is the gold standard in the industry when it comes to revenue sharing programs because a lot of other platforms don't have anything like this at all. Like Instagram, for instance, there's no way to get money just for creating stuff for ads placed on your content. But TikTok has the creator fund, which is kind of a revenue sharing platform, but it's different than YouTube because it's not necessarily tied to like a CPM. I could make a whole video about like why the creator fund isn't as good as it seems, but the point is YouTube is unique in that you can make a decent amount of money from just putting videos up on the platform and running ads on them. Now AdSense isn't gonna necessarily make you rich unless you're a massive creator with millions of views, but there are some ways that you can optimize your content to have a higher CPM, which by the way stands for cost per mil or basically how much money you get for every 1,000 monetized views on your videos. 
Channels that are in the business or finance niche tend to have a higher CPM and it just kind of makes sense, right? Because the people watching their videos are probably business owners. They probably have a little bit more disposable income or money that they can use to invest in their business. And so reaching these kind of viewers is really valuable for advertisers because those advertisers know that those types of viewers have money to spend. On the other hand, if your primary audience is like kids or teenagers, you'll probably have a lower CPM because those people are not exactly known for having a lot of money to spend. It also varies depending on where your audience is. If you have an audience in the United States, you'll probably get a higher CPM as opposed to an audience in a country where people don't have as much money. So it varies a lot, but just for your reference, my channel earns anywhere between like two and $3,000 a month from AdSense revenue. So uh, that's pretty awesome. It's more than I make off of my Instagram content. So, <laughs> but here's the thing on YouTube, the money is not really even in AdSense. It's in the brand deals you can get. And I can hear you thinking, but you can get brand deals on Instagram too. But my friend, let me tell you, brand deals on YouTube can earn you more money. Brand deals on YouTube are just worth more. Now, obviously full transparency, I charge more for my YouTube integrations than I do for my sponsored reels or Instagram stories. Cause obviously I have more of an audience here, but even for somebody who had the same number of subscribers as they had Instagram followers, you can charge more for a YouTube brand deal. And here's why YouTube videos have more lasting power. Like I was saying before with search or even with recommendations, your content can keep finding a new audience long after it's been published. Meanwhile, for something like stories, especially they're only live for 24 hours, but even feed content on Instagram only has such a long shelf life, right? So that's why YouTube brand deals are so valuable because they can keep serving brands like months and years into the future. If all of this hasn't convinced you to start a YouTube channel yet, then hopefully this will. Having content on YouTube is a huge advantage when it comes to creating your Instagram content as well. So even if your final goal is still to grow your Instagram following, you can use YouTube to do that. YouTube content is by nature longer format. It's high value. You pack a lot of stuff into one YouTube video. And so that makes YouTube videos perfect for repurposing for Instagram content. Each YouTube video you create is just a wealth of inspiration, quotes and clips that you can post on Instagram. And I've recently come across this really amazing tool for taking a YouTube video and instantly turning it into Instagram content. And they also happen to be the sponsor of today's video. And that is Munch. You can find them by going to the link in my description or searching get Munch. Basically Munch is an AI powered content repurposing machine. All you need to do is input a YouTube link and Munch will automatically create Instagram reels and feed videos for you out of your content. It crops it to the size that's perfect for posting wherever you want to post it. And the AI picks out interesting sections of your video or good quotes to use so that you don't even have to go back through your old videos to find those perfect moments. Munch detects those for you, which I think is incredible. Another cool thing about Munch is that it will actually detect where you are in the frame. So it will pan side to side to keep a human face in the cropped version. Cause one of the most frustrating things about cropping down a horizontal video like this to vertical is that if you just take the very center of the frame, I might not necessarily be framed correctly in a vertical aspect ratio. So much takes care of that to make sure that your reels and your feed video content of your YouTube video look good. So then basically all you need to do is export your clips, upload them into Instagram, add auto captions, add any text or interactive stickers that you want, and then you're ready to go. Check out Munch and start using it totally for free at the link in my description. Even beyond using Munch, which I do recommend you try out, you can create content based on the concepts of your YouTube videos. Like think about a video like this or Literally any video I make for YouTube, I could create like two or three or four Instagram carousel graphics out of the content of that video. I could pull out quotes to make tweet graphics. I could find some kind of funny moment or like relatable problem that I discuss in the video. I could turn that into a meme. So there's so much possibility for taking your YouTube videos as a starting point for your Instagram content. 
So if I have you convinced and you're ready to start your YouTube channel, then you might just want to figure out exactly what your niche is. And I have the perfect video for you. It's an oldie, but a goodie. I talk about my exact process for finding an effective niche for growing on YouTube. So check out that video next. And of course, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having adventures and following your dreams and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.